You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Yelp Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Yelp will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I am happy to welcome back to the show Scott Milligan. Scott's a business programs consultant at the Disney Institute. He was with us a few months ago, and we've welcomed him back because there was great feedback to what he had to talk about. about. So, Scott, I'd like to welcome you to the show again. Oh, thank you so much, Doug. It's a real privilege to be on your program, uh, and it's a real privilege to be able to share with you some of our thoughts about how we lead our operation here at the Walt Disney Company. Great. What I'd like to talk a little bit about ton- tonight is about dreams. One of the uh, the popular messages that we receive from Disneyland is this whole concept of realizing our dreams. But in business, that's often a little bit of a, a strange concept because, you know, business is business. So what are some of the essential lessons about dreaming that, that business people should learn? Yeah, well, you know, certainly with every organization, it really is about uh, dealing with dreams because certainly with us, you know, you think about the entertainment industry, that makes a direct connection to it. But I was working with a banking organization recently, for instance, and they said, well, we're not about, you know, this creating magic and we're not about dreams. And I said, well... How about the dream of home ownership? How about the dream of someone having their first car? How about the dream of somebody having, you know, enough money to do what they choose to do in retirement or to be able to take care of their parents? And the reality is I think virtually every business is about dreams in some way, shape, or form or your business wouldn't exist. I think what our challenge as leaders is, is how do I get everybody who's online in my organization to feel that they're part of that dream? And do you think that's you know, important? Is that, is that an important thing to do as opposed to just having you know, Walt Disney on top with the dream and then everyone else just kind of works for him? <laughs> you know, it, wouldn't it be nice if every organization had a Walt Disney on top? That would, that would be that dream maker. But, you know, the reality is maybe my job is, you know, within this environment, I'm the one who cleans the toilets at the end of the day. And it's a lot harder for you to say that my job is about dreams, <laughs> right. considering the job that I do. But the reality is, you know, here at, where I, I happen to be based, uh, you know, at Disney Institute, we do programs around the world for a variety of, of companies. But our headquarters happens to be based here in Central Florida, and we have 60,000 people who come to work each and every day at, at, at Central Florida. Do you think all of those people in the morning jump out of bed and say, thank you for letting me work for the Walt Disney Company. I can't wait to get showered and shaved and get to work and sprinkle pixie dust on 10,000 perfect strangers today? Well, yes, actually, I do think that's what they think. <laughs> which, that's what it seems like when I go. I... But, you know, Fantasyland is one part of our park. Okay. <laughs> But the the reality is, you know, there, there's human beings, and when you've got human beings, there are some that are with you, that they get the dream, they know why you're there, they get the purpose of the organization. There's also people that say, hey, for me, it's just a job, you know, I'll do what you need me to do, I clock in in the morning, I clock out at the end of the day. But, you know, everybody else is somewhere in the middle in that spectrum. And our job as the leadership is to how do we influence those people in the middle more by those people at the top than at the bottom of the spectrum. So specifically, a tactic that we have at the Disney organization is we say it's about sharing a common purpose. Because, again, those 60,000 people I was talking to, we have roughly 2,000 different job descriptions. So there's a lot of different jobs, everything from A to Z, literally from accountant to zoologist working for me. Mm -hmm. But we all have one common purpose. Here at Disney Parks and Resorts, our common purpose is we create happiness. We create happiness by providing the finest in entertainment for people of all ages everywhere. Now, this is not a marketing slogan. It's not a tagline. It's not something that's going to change you know, next time we're running an ad. This is something that is totally internal. But I, as the leader of my operation, I want everybody that works for me to feel this we create happiness. So when you that, work with when you bring yeah. – that's very nice in the fantasy world, the Disney world, right? But in, yeah. Like the banking customer you said you worked with, it's a little bit different, right? They're not creating happiness. They're trying to create loans or – interest rates, you know? How does that exactly, work? Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, I worked with one recently, and, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously We Create Happiness doesn't, uh, doesn't work for them, but what they came up as their version of it is, we improve lives by unlocking opportunities. 
Mm-hmm. Now think of that from a banking, you know, when you think about the stereotype of a banking operation, what do you do? You tend to lock stuff up, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you lock up the money, you lock up the vault. And here their concept is we're improving people's lives by unlocking opportunities. So what are those opportunities you can do to unlock for me? So again, every, whether I'm providing loans, whether I'm somebody who is you know, literally the, the security guard, whether I'm somebody who is you know, the teller uh, in that location, whether I'm somebody that's in risk management, all of us are about unlocking those opportunities for the people that we're serving. I see. You know, I think it's a nice it's a nice way to put it. You, you know, my 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 day job is that I'm a financial advisor here in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. I, I have this uh, radio show where I get to speak to neat guys like you only once a week. But at Profile <laughs> Investments, we uh, a big part of what I do in the financial planning world is I I try to at least in the opening meetings I try to get clients to tell me what it is that they'd like to do. And I, I always do try to differentiate between dreams and goals. I say, you have to tell me your dreams, and I, I can tell you the the technical goals we have to achieve in order to get to those dreams. So you know, I'm, be, I'm beginning to hear the difference. Um, we're speaking now to Scott Milligan, who is the business programs consultant at the Disney Institute. The Disney Institute offers a whole range of classes for people in business and for companies. Scott, in the last interview when we had you on the show, you spoke about developing Mm -hmm. business leadership. So uh, generally, I think people think about that in terms of developing that in in the workplace. But is there something that we can encourage our children to do to make them become the leaders of tomorrow? Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. I was I was talking to a, a group recently, and and this group was uh, they're within a, a major organization, and and this group is about um, providing acquisition, providing uh, procurement, all that sort of stuff. And I was trying to think, you know, that they're in the concept right now of trying to do more with less, right? How often do we hear that, do more with less? Hmm. And it, it prompted my mind. I said, you know, how can I kind of turn that upside down? Because when we think at Disney, we, we don't like the cliches. We don't like, you know, the cliche of thinking outside the box. Is everybody says that. So we develop a, our own that says, think inside the box, think a little differently. So when somebody says to me, you know, uh, an, an expression of how do I do more with less, I started thinking, how can I explain this to this group? And I started thinking of an interaction that I actually had with with a young teenager. She was 13 years old. And uh, I was talking with her mom, and we were talking about the concept of leadership, and her mom happens to be studying for her her master's degree in in business administration. And we were talking about this concept of servant leadership, et cetera. And her daughter came by and said, you know, what what are you guys talking about now? You know, like it'll be, you know, some more boring adult stuff. And I said, well, well, we're talking about the concept, you know, back from, we both had some psychological training, which, you know, the concept of is the glass half full or is the glass half empty, right? How, how many people have said that? Is it half full? Is it half empty? And if I'm a leader that looks at things from it being half full versus I'm a leader that looks at it being half empty. And it was interesting, this young person, you know, and kind of the innocence of, of a youth. And she said, but why are you wasting your time talking about the glass? <laughs> And I said, that, I said, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, here you go. And, and she said, it doesn't matter what size the glass is. She says, it matters what you have in the glass and what you intend to do with what's in the glass. And to me, that was like one of those blinding flashes of the obvious of saying that it really isn't about what I have or it isn't what about what I don't have. It's about what am I going to do with what I've got. And, you know, so that that cliche of doing more with less turned into how do I do more with what I have? So, you know, kind of answering your question, when we think, where where do we start with the youth? Well, maybe we as business professionals, maybe we need to go back to that innocence of youth a little bit and Mm -hmm. kind of look at our perspectives. That, you know, to this young lady, the glass was irrelevant in this conversation. What was inside the glass was important. (laughs) I, I was discussing, actually, it's funny, this metaphor with my brother. My, my brother's a patent attorney, but his uh, training is as an engineer. So this came up, is you know, the glass half full or half empty? He said, well, I, I, it seems to me the question is a little bit odd, because if you only need to have the glass halfway, then maybe your glass is just too big for whatever it is you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's just a different way of looking at it. And I, I think, you know, that's kind of, you know, if you ask, what, what is it that we teach through our Disney Institute when we're working with businesses? And it's trying to look at it from a whole different perspective. You know, because how many people have been in those meetings where the senior leader then says, well, you know, you want to work on this operation a little bit. Let's think outside the box. Is there a more cliched expression than think outside the box? Mm-hmm. You know? 
<laughs> so how do you think a little differently? How do you approach it a little bit differently? And that's, that's kind of, a, you know, at, at Disney, we kind of call it D thinking. Uh, you know, if you think of the, the letter D being the Disney D, you know, from like Walt Disney Signature, and we kind of put D apostrophe think and say it's about de-thinking your business. It's about taking a look at your business and looking at it from a different perspective. And sometimes it's, it's helpful to think from a child's perspective because they're not, they don't have all those filtering systems that we have. Was that really his signature? <laughs> that was. It, was. it was not his signature early in life, but it was his signature as he evolved it later on. So he he evolved it into a more decorative signature. All right. Um, well, certainly Disney is known for accommodating customer service. Uh, mm -hmm. It all I mean, we spoke about last time, and I think I gave you some examples of just how great everything was when I was there. But when you oh, recruit absolutely. employees, do you hire people who already have these skills, or is this something that you can train them? And if so, how? You know, we look a, a combination of both, but we talk about when we're looking at the selection process, like we have a program that we call Disney's Approach to People Management. And in that Disney's Approach to People Management, we say it's really the culture of the organization that you're trying to define. What is the culture? Because if, if you haven't decided on what the culture should be, a culture develops anytime there are human beings together. So we'd rather have a culture that's by design rather than the alternative, which is a culture by default. Mm -hmm. Then now that I've designed what I want that culture to be, I need to select people who are the right fit. I need to provide them training for emotional buy-in, and I need to communicate with them to inform and to inspire. So at the selection portion of it, I, we tend to say in our, in our Disney Institute classes, we look for people who are going to be a right fit for the role that we're going to put them into. So I tend to hire more for attitude than I do for aptitude. Quick example, let's say I was going to hire somebody to work in, in one of our parks or in one of our hotels, and we spent 20 minutes in, in the course of an interview, and you didn't smile at me once in the course of this interview. You didn't make <laughs> eye contact with me. What's the chances you're going to smile and make eye contact with 10,000 strangers tomorrow? Right. It's just not going to happen if you didn't do it in this, inti in this intimate setting. So, yes, we're looking for people who have that aptitude, you know, kind of thing, uh, but also for people who have an attitude that's going to be uh, reflected in that way. I can teach you how to drive a monorail. I can teach you how to make a bed. I can teach you how to, you know, accept credit cards and handle cash. I can teach you all of those things. It's a lot harder to teach you to want to smile and be helpful and to want to have that, attitude, that helpful attitude. I see. Well, you certainly are very successful at that. Scott, we are just about out of time, but tell me, the Disney Institute, how can people learn more? Uh, well, certainly our website, www.disneyinstitute, as one word, .com. And, uh, you know, we can give you lots of information there about uh, having people come to one of our Disney locations for some programming, or we travel around the world and we do programming uh, for everybody. Okay. Well, I hope we will get to see you in Israel very soon. Scott Milligan from the Disney Institute, Looking thanks so to. much. Thank you, Doug. It's always a pleasure. Take care. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.